Now, a um, large majority of the QA team, particularly the old school QAers, love Rock Nard just the way he, he is, his dopey face. Um, however, graphics obviously really want to update him. So, I want to get an opinion, show of hands, who wants to keep Rock Nard looking like that? And who wants to update him? Update. Update. It's just so update. <laughs> Okay, so uh, slightly more to uh, wanting to update, I'm disappointed, I have to say. Moving on. So then, to begin with, tools for testing. Wow. Oh, we got the, the greater bag. demon punch bag. One of the things that we test in QA is, say, a new weapon or a new piece of combat equipment. We look at the DPS, the damage per second. To do this, it could mean spawning the same NPC over and over and over, which can get quite tiresome. So one thing that we've done here is create the Greater Demon Punch Bag. As the name suggests, here's a punch bag to take a beating, to actually look at this DPS figures. Uh, okay, Jackie. Hi, Zeke. Um, so if you look at the red box, um, this is a common known issue that was in the live game for quite a while. Uh, when a world is rebooted um, after an update, uh, all NPCs will face south. So, as you can see in the picture, um, that looks really strange. They're not facing you initially. Um, these sort of things aren't as simple as just putting in a ticket to a developer to be fixed. Um, in this case, uh, this was an engine request. Uh, so, we would send in a ticket to engine and then they would prioritise the ticket in order of what needs to be done more urgently. Engine are usually very busy. But, as you know now, that's fixed and we can now determine the way that NPCs face. Okay, so one thing that QA do when we get content is we also give feedback. And so you can see here on the left is what the dragon pickaxe originally looked like when it came into QA. It wasn't particularly impressive and to be honest looked like an umbrella. Under my umbrella, Ella, 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 E, E, yeah. And so we gave feedback, <laughs> said that it's not suitable um, and now see on the right the version that's in the live game. And this happens all over the game. A lot of the time, content changes drastically from when it enters the QA to what actually gets released. Okay. <laughs> now, before you all have a go at me, I am aware multi-logging is against the rules in the live game. But here we can see a typical uh, screenshot taken from one of our QA testers. This was during mobilizing armies, and it really shows sort of the limitations of the size of our team. And also, we need to log on multiple accounts so that we can see how sort of some of our mini games and distractions and diversions work. We've actually got 12 clients running here on a single PC, so wow. this slows the PC down dramatically and really, really does lag an awful lot. You know, it's quite hard testing that many accounts, so we've got to have all these logged on. But no, I'm aware multi-logging is against the rules in the live game. Um, no, actually. No, no, none of us do that. She's breaking rules. She is breaking rules. She's lying. Um, okay, the murder of Ophelia. Okay, so as you know, this was a recent update uh, to the clan to the clan citadel. This is the clan theatre that you can get once you obtain a tier five citadel. Raise of hands, who has a tier five citadel now? Nice. Hey, well, okay. Very nice. Right. Okay. And um, before I continue, we've got a video to show you. So, in true theatre style, action. Okay, so this is Mod Tom H testing this. He's doing a basic NPC check. He's going to check that the Get Orb op actually gives him an orb. Bam! Dead. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, that, it's obviously a problem. Um, let, I'll, I'll just tell you what the problem actually was. Um, the default op for number two op is always attack on an NPC. So the developer had either the code was slightly wrong or had missed changing that up in there. So, you, as you can imagine, if you was if that was to go live, you know, <laughs> poor Ophelia. <laughs> Tom didn't get any epic loot either. He was quite disappointed. I did, did bury the bones, though. You did bury free free prayer experience, yeah. <laughs> so I can't film my legs. As you can see here, there's something missing. What's happened here is when the client tries to add an invalid object or an invalid texture, it adds null, nothing. So in this case, 
the waist are down of the character, nothing's been added, and they are completely missing. We've got another quick example here if we come to the next slide of where the client has tried to add an incorrect <laughs> label, and we can see the whole model there is missing. If your whole body was missing, you would pick a decent pair of shoes, would you not? Yeah, at least <laughs> one. You've got some of shoes. A leather. So? So, if you play mobilising armies, you might notice the units, but the cat looks a little out of place. <laughs> what this is, is that because the units are shrunk down in mobilising armies to get the grand scale, anything else that's in the game is normal size looks completely out of proportion. In this instance, a player has logged into the game with a pet cat following them, and that's resulted in the pet cat wandering around the battlefield. <laughs> and in a recent survey, we found out that nine out of ten cats prefer the taste of dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Stretchy. Um, okay, I guess a lot of you are wondering what that is. Um, when I, this actually, I find this quite amusing when I find this bug. Um, it can come up quite often. Um, this is, believe it or not, an edit from the familiarization minigame. As you know, you get transmogrified into a familiar when you enter. What we see here is a typical labeling issue. Uh, what is a labeling issue? Uh, a label is basically like bones in your body. So you'd have a label up here for the upper right arm, you'd have a label here for the lower right arm, the wrist, etc. So if the labels are incorrect, it will stretch. It's, it's crazy. Um, we've got a video for you. Um, let's watch these guys break it down. All right, so here you go. It's a KVD entrance. Wait a minute, sir. There you go. They just they, they do look scary. They look a lot scarier there than they do in game. <laughs> his head's going down to his feet and everything. But... Going through the floor a little bit as well. He's looking pretty good. Bring the fans if you'd like to see a monster in game like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> graphics won't like that. <laughs> I get in trouble with graphics. Okay, so this one here, uh, as you can see, it's not much for these guys to stand on. This is what our game looks like when there's no text has been displayed at all. Uh, I shouldn't need to ask you, but whereabouts is this in game? Lumbridge. Lumbridge. Lumbridge, yeah. yeah. Doom uh, is there. I think my favourite part of this is the little ducks. I mean, they haven't got much water, but they can still kind of like they have a little bit of swim around behind them. But no, kind of interesting. Baroom! No, we are not going crazy. For those of you who That's don't know what that is, that is the sound <laughs> that a pack cat makes. So what do we have here then? As most of you all know, this is a scene within a court case. And you'll probably be aware that you can't take familiars in there. That wasn't the case to begin with. And as you can see, this yak made his way into the court case in a, an odd position, and he's trying to fill his dream of becoming the yak lawyer of the year. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to explain this a little bit. This is kind of strange. Eat, eat cabbage. Right. Unsafe use of eat cabbage. I know there's a history of cabbages within RuneScape. And what you're seeing here is a script error that some developers may see if they enter some script into their client and it's not recognised by the engine. This is a legacy script. It was added in by Andrew Gow right at the beginning. So there's still cabbages even in our scripts. <laughs> Okay, this is quite an interesting bug, and it's one that's only popped up once in game, as far as I can remember. Um, to give you an explanation of how it works, this is to do with locks, which are locations. Now, locations in game are pretty much all the scenery, things you interact with, trees, doors, crates, something you don't even interact with, just general scenery. And the way this works for a door or a gate is that when you click to open it, it deletes the closed version and re-adds an open version. Now this can cause issues um, if the version isn't added in the correct spot. So this is what happens when locks go wild. So as you can see here, the gate keeps getting added in a different spot. It's going to eventually reach some scenery, it's just going to go through it. <laughs> and this would have carried on as long as we were able to keep clicking the gate. So effectively you could take out a large chunk of RuneScape with a single gate. 
Okay, so <laughs> this is another image we've got from Mobilising Armies, Walking on Water. Now, in the game, we use something called blocking. This is usually put around the edges of the map. This is kind of like an invisible wall to stop you guys from getting put into places like this. And this was actually what happened when we missed one section of blocking. You're able to actually get right into the middle of the water and kind of get take like godlike abilities, I reckon. You know, kind of get, get out there on the water and, yeah. So, not necessarily a bug as such, but one of the key points of being a QA is having a very good attention to detail. And this is what one QA with a very good eye for detail can get. So, let's have a show of hands who can actually see the, uh, the issue, shall we call it, in this picture. <laughs> and the rest of you still not got it yet? It's got it sad though. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. If you want to just highlight Let's this for you. <laughs> so, oh, wait, one of the skeleton who objected to being PK'd. <laughs> Okay, broke flat mountain. <laughs> broke flat mountain. <laughs> right, okay, um, before we continue, can anyone guess which mountain this is? Just shout it out. Ice Mountain. Ice Mountain. What was that? Ice Mountain. It's Wife of Mountain. It's, 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 no, it's, it's another really. word for Wife of Mountain, isn't it? Ice Mountain. No. It's White Wolf Mountain. It's on the other side of Alright, right, okay, well, this is White Wolf Mountain, and this is what happens when um, graphics kindly delete the map, the height mapping in the area. Okay, so height mapping is what determines the height of the ground. Um, so I'm sure you could all imagine what RuneScape would be like if it had no height mapping at all. It would be pretty be boring, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, graphics uh, deleted the height mapping. This isn't on purpose. Uh, sometimes um, it's accidental. <laughs> So, this is what happens if a wear position on uh, an object is wrong. So in this case, the helmet. You try to equip it and the wear position is just a little bit further south than it should be, which gives us the loving head crotch. Okay, this is left down to me. Thanks very much, guys. Um, this is currently in the live game. Yep, this is in a cutscene from A Tale of Two Cats. And as you can see, I don't really need to say what's going on here, but um, I'm pretty sure that's not what it was meant to look like in the Titanic. Is that right? That is in the live game right now. Yep. When? How did that? I love how the guys left that to me. <laughs> Okay, um, darkness swept over the land. No, this is not what happens once or if Zamorak has taken over RuneScape. Um, what you can see here is an underlay issue. Underlays are like the, the, basic, the basic floor, so like moss, rock, um, stone. Um, so this is what happens when underlays have completely been removed. You can see the blades of grass, but there's no actual, there's no pattern underneath. Thanks. Okay, we've got another example for you. Okay, so this is the same issue, but uh, this is where they're just broken, the underlay is broken. Um, you can see it's forming uh, a red brick road, and yes, it does lead to the wizard's tower. <laughs> Follow the red brick road. So, I'm sure most of you know Evil Dave's uh -huh. Dungeon of Doom. But what you probably don't know is Saturday night he turns it into a disco of doom. <laughs> this is what happens when uh, lighting details get messed up, and so you get this weird sort of massive bloom effect because the lighting's turned way, way up high. Thank you. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 